welcome uh, our speakers. A very good afternoon. Let me welcome our speakers for the 13th webinar on uh, the National Good Governance uh, Series on Prime Minister's award-winning initiatives. Today's theme is Innovation for State Governments. Uh, a brief background on the subject. Uh, the DRPG had made a presentation to the Honorable Prime Minister on the PM's Awards for Excellence in Public Administration in uh, 2021. And one of the decisions was that uh, virtual conferences and webinars with district collectors and other officers will be held over 12 months. And each time a specific theme or sector will be taken up in which past award winners since inception of the scheme will be asked to share their experiences. Thereafter, the Prime Minister further directed that uh, virtual sessions of about an hour to hour and a half should be held with lead speakers to disseminate the best practices. Accordingly, government has curated 13 national good governance webinars. And today is the last one in the series of webinars that we've commenced in April 2022. So far, the webinars have been held on improving public service delivery, health, aspirational districts program, grievance redressal, environment. We also had another session on public service delivery, public participation, Jan Bhagidari through Swachh Bharat Mission, innovations in central ministries, water management and JAL, then innovations at district level, aspirational districts program, and the last one was on Namami Gange. The awarded uh, states, districts, and organizations have presented their work in each of these sessions. And uh, the, uh, the large, larger objective of having uh, a vast pool of dissemination has been fulfilled with each webinar being attended by about a thousand officials. Today, two initiatives are being presented. One is building of efficient uh, greenhouse to grow crops in Ladakh. This received the PM's awards for excellence in public administration in 2021. And uh, the second nomination is the data-driven transformation of school education system in Gujarat through the Vidya Samiksha Kendras. Now this received the PM's award in 2021 under the innovation state category. So let me invite the first speaker today will be Sri Ravindra Kumar, an officer of the 2012 batch of UT Carter. He is currently working as Administrative Secretary, Power, Renewable Energy, Sports, Agriculture, Horticulture, Animal Husbandry, Fisheries in the Union Territory of Ladakh. He also served as Deputy Commissioner Lay and Deputy Secretary, Agriculture and Horticulture. And uh, he's been a recipient of the PM's Award for Excellence in Public Administration 2021 and a National Award on Women Empowerment in 2018 mm -hmm. under the Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao scheme. He will brief you about the award nomination in, the, in his presentation. Our second speaker will be Dr. Vinod Ramachandra Rao. He's an IS officer of 2000 batch and he has a PhD in management. He has served as collector Patan, Bharuj, Vadodara and also as municipal commissioner of Vadodara city. And since 2018, he has been leading the school education department of government of Gujarat as secretary of the department. Dr. Rao has conceptualized the country's first holistic school transformation project mission schools of excellence to upgrade 20,000 government schools in the state with an investment of 12,000 crores. Mission schools of excellence were launched by the Honorable Prime Minister in October 22, and Dr. Vinod Rao received the PM's Award for Excellence in Public Administration in April 2022 for the technology-driven transformation of school education system in Gujarat through the Vidya Samiksha Kendra. So we'll have a short film on the awarded initiatives and thereafter we'll have the presentations. The film, please. DRDO Defense Institute of High Altitude Research ki madad se. 
लद्दाख क्षेत्र के लिए पैसिव सोलर ग्रीन हाउस की स्थापना कर प्रदेश को आत्मनिर्भर बनाया इस तकनीक की मदद से 315 सोलर ग्रीन हाउसेस की स्थापना की जिससे 206 टन से अधिक हरी सब्जियों का उत्पादन हुआ मैं एक किसान हूँ मैं पिछले यानी 20 साल से किसान का ही काम करता हूँ लद्दाख में ठंड के वजह से मेनास 35 डिग्री तक जो है ठंड हो जाते हैं। पांच छह महीने तो बिल्कुल ग्रीन एरिया आपको देखती नहीं है। उस सूरत में फिर ये होता था ग्रीन वेजिटेबल्स वगैरह बिल्कुल नहीं मिलता था। टेम्परेचर मेंटेनेंस है वो रात को कहीं ना कहीं विंटर में जो हमारे दिसंबर जनवरी जो महीने हैं उसमें माइनस सिक्स माइनस सेवन डिग्री के आसपास चला जाता है जिससे कि क्रॉप्स उसमें डैमेज हो जाती हैं तो उसके कारण हम मार्केट में उस प्रोड्यूस को भेज नहीं पाते हैं प्राइवेट जो सब्जी बाहर से जो आता है इतना महंगा होता है कि एक सौ चालीस एक सौ साठ तक का वो खरीदना पड़ता हर कोई तो खरीद नहीं पाते दूसरा तो मिलता भी नहीं लाइन में लगना पड़ता था फिर जो अवेलेबल होगा वही खा के रहते हैं तो बैलेंस डाइट नहीं मिलता था डीआरडीओ ने इसमें रिसर्च किया है कोई सात साल के करीब रिसर्च किया इसके प्रोजेक्ट के ऊपर और फिर जब डिपार्टमेंट के साथ में टेक्नोलॉजी को शेयर किया गया तो डिपार्टमेंट और डीआरडीओ ने मिलकर इसका एक्शन प्लान बनाया ये इनिशिएटिव जो लद्दाख ऑटोनोमस हेल्थ डेवलपमेंट काउंसिल है उसके द्वारा शुरू किया गया था इसका मकसद ये है कि जैसे सिक्किम और बाकी कुछ एरियाज ऑर्गेनिक के ऊपर काम कर रहे हैं उसी तरह लद्दाख को भी एक ऑर्गेनिक उसमें रीजन में कन्वर्ट करना ग्रीन हाउस किस तरीके से बनाना है और सब्जियां कैसे उगाना है हम किसानों के गांव में आके जो है उन्होंने लेक्चर दे के टेक्नोलॉजी के द्वारा जो है हम किसानों को समझाया पॉलीकार्बोनेटेड ग्रीन हाउस की वजह से अभी पूरे पूरे साल थ्रू आउट ईयर ग्रीन वेजिटेबल्स हम मिलता है तो वो बहुत ही बड़ी बात है तो हमारा टारगेट है कि हम दो तक लद्दाख को ऑर्गेनिक में कन्वर्ट करें बच्चों के न्यूट्रिशनल वैल्यू पे काफी इंपैक्ट पड़ा है पॉलीकार्बोनेटेड ग्रीन हाउस से इस ग्रैंड मदर में तो ये चाहूँगी कि मेरे पोते पोतियों का फ्यूचर जो है उनका सेहत बहुत बढ़िया हो बैलेंस उनको डाइट मिले पॉलीकार्बोनेटेड ग्रीन हाउस में बारह महीना सब्जियाँ उगाने से हम किसानों को जो है डबल इनकम हो रहा है और खुशहाली हो रहा है और फ्यूचर में हमारी कोशिश है की हम जो वेजिटेबल की जितनी भी डिमांड है विंटर की उसको हम पूरा ग्रीन हाउसेस से पूरा करें इंटरप्रेनर्स को हम इसमें आगे लेके आए और वो फिर इस चीज को दुनिया के दूसरे हिस्सों में भी इसको सप्लाई करें शिक्षा को समग्र बनाने की सोच से गुजरात के शिक्षा विभाग द्वारा विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र की स्थापना की इसके माध्यम से छात्रों और शिक्षकों की ऑनलाइन अटेंडेंस और उनके प्रदर्शन का सही मूल्यांकन हुआ डेटा की मदद से पढ़ाई में कमजोर छात्रों को शिक्षकों का सहयोग दिया गया डिजिटल एजुकेशन जो आया उस वजह से बहुत ही बड़ा चेंज हुआ है हमारे स्कूलों में जैसे अब स्कूल में आते हैं बच्चे तो ज्ञान कुंज है स्मार्ट क्लास हो गया है हमारा उसमें यूट्यूब के माध्यम से बच्चे सब देख पाते हैं चित्र के हिसाब से मतलब कि दृश्य और श्राव्य दोनों का मिश्रण होता है तो बच्चे अच्छी तरह से सुन भी पाते हैं और देख पाते हैं और उस हिसाब से वो ज्यादा अच्छी तरह से याद कर लेते हैं मैं विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र के लिए बहुत ही ग्रेटफुल हूँ अब मैं सिर्फ एक क्लिक से अपने मोबाइल से मेरे पूरे डिस्ट्रिक्ट का डेटा देख सकती हूँ कहाँ कहाँ हमारी गलतियाँ हैं, कहाँ सुधार की आवश्यकता है ये हमें तुरंत पता चलता है अब मैं मेरे डिस्ट्रिक्ट की मॉनिटरिंग बहुत आसानी से कर सकती हूँ विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र ऐसी हमें हमारी गलतियों को सुधारने के लिए और आगे बढ़ने के लिए बहुत मदद मिलती है इस तरह ऐसी विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र हमारी स्ट्रेंथ बना हुआ है हम राज्य जिला ब्लॉक शाला शिक्षक या विद्यार्थी तक इस व्यवस्था से पहुंच सकते हैं और ये व्यवस्था अंत में बच्चों के विकास के लिए ही बनी है बच्चों के विकास के लिए राज्य से लेकर विद्यार्थी तक की जो हमारी पूरी टीम है 
वो सब साथ में मिलकर सतत विद्यार्थी के विकास के लिए प्रयत्नशील है ये प्रोजेक्ट शुरू होने से यहाँ के बच्चों को भी शिक्षा का अच्छा खासा लाभ मिला है और बच्चे भी स्कूल में आते हैं और पेरेंट्स का भी हमें साथ मिल रहा है इसलिए ये काम बहुत ही प्रशंसा के लायक है बहुत ही अच्छी शिक्षा दे रहे हैं बच्चे पढ़ा रहे हैं और टाइम से आ जाते हैं हाँ ये स्कूल आने से ऐसा लग रहा है की कुछ हो सकता है आगे बढ़ सकते हैं ये स्कूल आने ऐसी अटेंडेंस की बात करें तो सबसे पहले हम बच्चों की रजिस्टर में अटेंडेंस लेते हैं फिर वो टेक्स्ट मैसेज द्वारा स्कूल के प्रिंसिपल को अटेंडेंस भेज देते हैं बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इनिशिएटिव द मियर फीलिंग दैट समबडी अप देयर इज वाचिंग अस एंड वी हैव लिंक्ड इट विद एक्शनेबल इंस्ट्रक्शंस दैट इफ अ स्टूडेंट इज एब्सेंट कंटीन्यूअसली फॉर 3 डेज द टीचर हैज टू रीच आउट टू पेरेंट It's a positive pressure built in the system. In case of teachers, the result was dramatic. As this system strengthened, the need for a centralized monitoring mechanism through command and control center became more and more inevitable. So, in the coming days, this centralized assessments will help in making system more responsive and accountable. So let me invite our first speaker for the day, the Sri Ravindra Kumar, Secretary, Government of Ladakh, to present the initiative on building of efficient greenhouse to grow crops in Ladakh. Sri Ravindra Kumar ji. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sir Nawaz sir, and other distinguished guests uh, for inviting me to this webinar and. Uh, showcasing us what we have done in the field of agriculture sir i would request someone to put my presentation as uh, yes sir yes sir uh, sir this was uh, uh, an initiative uh, by the agriculture department in collaboration with the uh, defense research uh, institute of high altitude and uh, uh, this uh, was started in 2021 and now uh, after two years uh, we have progressed very much in this uh, sector sir next uh, why we needed this innovation uh, because ladakh is a very difficult territory and uh, we have different challenges as compared to different parts of country uh, the major challenge is uh, supply of vegetables around the year uh, we have a shortage of vegetable around 70% during the summer season and in winter we are totally having hardly a 10% or 5% stored vegetable so there is a shortage of over 90% in the during the winters and there are passes which are cut off from rest of india for 6 months so transporting even the essentials is very difficult from uh, from delhi or from from chandigarh or from kashmir so that was the main reason that we needed something that can provide us uh, some alternative to these things and further the temperature drops to minus 30 degrees celsius so even a uh, grass is uh, not able to grow during this temperature and vegetables are uh, mainly grown during the summer period and that is from july to uh, uh, august september so hardly 2 3 months we are getting vegetable and then vegetable comes in in bulk form actually so the all people will be growing vegetable during these 2 3 months rest of the year we are dependent mostly from the other parts of country to import the vegetable and uh, third is sir uh, there is a hidden hunger actually uh, because in winter we are getting no vegetable fresh vegetable especially though uh, the people store traditionally uh, like potato they store they store uh, radish they store carrot also and also onion also and in the underground storage but we can't store the fresh vegetables actually which are leafy vegetable which are rich in uh, different minerals and uh, micronutrients so there is a hidden hunger concept and there is a prevalence of anemia in the population and also other micronutrient deficiency in the 
population and especially the children in the growing age. And the air freight of all the vegetables which are imported through the air is about 100 rupees per kg. So vegetable price was, would be uh, around 140 rupees, 150 rupees, even for uh, cauliflower, even for cabbage, all these uh, vegetables which are readily available in the uh, plain areas at the cost of 15 rupees or 20 rupees. So it, it, it is a kind of a disincentive for the people to buy these kind of high vegetable. So they, they mainly depend upon the local store vegetables. So that becomes the cause of hidden hunger also and the lack of nutrients to the uh, people. Next. So earlier uh, we had uh, though greenhouse technologies being used in Ladakh from last 30, 40 years. But all these technologies were having some limitations and not able to meet our demand uh, during the winters. And uh, in traditional passive solar greenhouse, which are mainly uh, made up of polythene only. So they, they are only successful uh, in up to October or October, November. So, uh, and also uh, there is a limited uh, viability of these greenhouses. So we had to replace the polythene every after two years and uh, they are uh, unable to use in summer because of no ventilation and other things. So that was main problem that we are not uh, getting any uh, suitable technology to use our uh, greenhouses for growing the vegetables for the winter months. Next. So uh, this, uh, this was the Ladakh greenhouse that we designed with the help of uh, DRDO. And uh, it's a passive solar greenhouse, which means that it only uses the solar energy passively. There is no use of electricity. There is no use of other uh, power source which is required. So only heat energy from the sun is trapped and the temperature maintenance is good because of the triple layer polycarbonate greenhouse. So the temperature is maintained above the freezing point. And uh, we uh, did uh, some pilot project uh, in the January and December months. Uh, you can see the picture of uh, uh, this broccoli and also uh, uh, mushroom also. So we grown uh, tomato, which is uh, uh, mainly the very temperature sensitive crop. And uh, these greenhouses are now, we can grow up to three, four crops during a, um, one year. So in comparison to the other crops, which are mainly a single crop during the year or hardly uh, other uh, leafy crops, which can be maximum two times. And the life is also about uh, 20 to 25 years if we use it uh, as per the, our uh, guidelines. Next. Uh, these are some uh, examples of uh, that what we grown uh, during the winters. Uh, we have grown cabbage and uh, cauliflower, which are mainly important from the uh, uh, plain areas during the winters. Then broccoli uh, uh, also grown and then uh, nolkhol, which is a uh, local variety also. So these, these are main crops that we grown during the, our uh, experimental stages. Next. So one more thing that we observed during the uh, successful implementation of this project that uh, there is a three times increased product, uh, crop productivity. Uh, as in uh, in open we, we if we in open we do uh, kind of a, uh, we, if we do other crops like uh, this uh, uh, crops like tomato or kheera then it's uh, uh, the production in greenhouse is because of control condition and uh, more uh, interventions uh, the crops uh, crops are giving three times more yield as compared to the open areas so because of temperature maintenance and other conditions and we have uh, also seen one more thing that the crops are growing maturing very early uh, so in this example uh, we we have seen one crop growing 47 days earlier as compared to the outside because Outside, even in summer, the temperature uh, goes down near zero degree also uh, at some time if there is a cloudy atmosphere. So uh, we are getting a increased yield with early uh, maturation. So that was the major benefit during the experimental stages. Next. So uh, this this project was uh, developed uh, by DRDO with the uh, Department uh, of Agriculture and uh, this is the one of the best example of uh, lab to land replicability. We see uh, many uh, projects which are very good in lab and in field they are not being successfully implemented and 
uh, the technology is not transferred as per the requirement of the farmers. And this technology was transferred by Honorable Laksha Mantri in 2019 uh, to the local health council and local departments. And then Honorable Lieutenant Governor launched this project uh, with the, the support of the both health councils and also member of parliament and other uh, dignitaries. So this project was transferred from DRDO to the uh, Agriculture Department of Ladakh. Next. So now uh, uh, for replicability of this project from lab to land, we uh, first did a, a pilot project in uh, nearby Thikse village uh, to check what, what are the uh, benefits and what are the challenges that we will be facing in the field while implementing this project. So uh, for one year we did this uh, project and for one winter we tested this project. And as per uh, the demand of farmers and uh, seeing the limitations in the field, we made some minor changes. And then we uh, did a th third party validation of this project from the uh, Kashmir University and also the ICR uh, lab of Kazri. And uh, now th this project uh, can be replicated in different parts of uh, Himalayan states also. And even uh, in uh, Central Asian, uh, Tibetan region of uh, countries also if, if they are interested because they all are having the similar challenges and they are all ha are having the uh, sun sunlight available for these kind of project next uh we we have seen uh, uh, some ba major best practices during the implementation of this project the first uh, best practice is organic produce uh, the uh, environment is controlled and uh, we are uh, giving vermihouse compost unit with, with this project. So both are integrated actually, and there is no external use of fertilizer and pesticide uh, uh, to this because in controlled condition, there are less uh, pesticide attack also, pest attack also. So we, uh, we, we are uh, promoting this as a organic produce. Multiple number of crops can be grown depending upon the nature of crop. Then vertical farming also introduced by some farmers for growing the like coriander, like other uh, hubs also. Then uh, some farmers are trying exotic vegetables like Italian hubs and other uh, 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 projects also. And then a few farmers are making some extra room uh, side to this greenhouse to tap the extra heat. And they are doing the, then this uh, mushroom cultivation. So that is also being introduced with that. And next, uh, the last is the entrepreneurship development. Few entrepreneurs are coming which are educated and they are uh, investing their own money also. And then they are uh, uh, trying to take more greenhouses uh, for uh, developing entrepreneurship model in apart from the farmers. Uh, we have an active role of uh, uh, local council, local uh, panchayats and also DRDO for making this scheme accessible to farmers. Uh, approximately 20 quintals per greenhouse is the production of this uh, and uh, income uh, depending upon the crops grown and depending upon the market uh, rates so uh, from 90000 to 1.4 lakh we have seen the uh, depending uh, price in uh, summer and winter so this is uh, that what we have uh, able to achieve next uh, these are few success stories that we uh, did during the winter months and we have done some organic sale of uh, vegetable in open market also during the uh, winter January months uh, during 2022 and also we did this year also. So this was public sale of greenhouse organic vegetable. Next. A uh, few, uh, few impact which are very uh, noteworthy during, uh, we have seen. Uh, first is Atam Nirpar and food security. Uh, we are mainly dependent upon 70-80% our food is being imported from the different parts of country and especially vegetable and fruits are imported from the plains. So uh, being Atam Nirbhar for the uh, locals, for the army and the, for the tourists. So uh, it will help us in meeting the food, uh, food security and also being the self-dependent upon the fresh vegetable. Then doubling the farmer income, I think this is the one of the best example that we have 90% farmer which are marginal farmer. And they are now uh, can uh, in in a very small area. Then they can increase their income up to two times or three times depending upon their uh, greenhouses. Uh, next, woman empowerment because in uh, most of the part we I have seen that 
women are playing very important role uh, in successful implementation of this project because in tourism mainly men are involved in tour tourist activities and women they take care of their greenhouses uh, especially the widow women or unemployed housewives or self help groups they are making good use of this project and they are very keen uh, for extending this project then other uh, vision of uh, ladakh is carbon neutral ladakh that we uh, whatever we produce uh, co2 that has to be absorbed or that has to be neutralized by the uh, different activities so this is one of the best project uh, that uh, using the solar energy and also reducing the carbon footprint because uh, for transporting a, any kind of a vegetable from the kashmir or from the himachal or from the plain also so i have, we have seen uh, that 300 trucks of fresh vegetables uh, now have been reduced because of the production of this greenhouse so that uh, comes about 2.91 lakh carbon uh, emission so that is that have been reduced that is a side product of uh, this uh, project actually then more crop per inch and per drop and water conservation ladakh is a cold desert actually and uh, we are facing water shortage uh, in during some uh, summer months as well as winter ones so um, uh, we we are using uh, drip irrigation we are using uh, the water evaporation is very less in the technology so uh, more uh, crop can be grown uh, per drop actually so the water conservation is also being introduced through this uh, process then mission organic development initiative uh, greenhouse is uh, actually integrated part of a mission organic development initiative and we are producing uh, uh, organic vegetable uh, and uh, also promoting the bio fertilizers actually thank you uh, next then uh, at present sir uh, last year we had uh, 315 greenhouses now the number is five times actually uh, we have successfully introduced uh, 1500 ladakh greenhouses and they are now working in the field and they have uh, and also there is huge demand also coming from the different councillors and different parts of Ladakh and they are being introduced in every part of Ladakh be it Changthang, be it Pengong Hill Lake area. So now the demand is increasing and total area under coverage is now 15.5 uh, hectare and income total income of farmer that uh, because of this project is 1.55 crore approximately and uh, uh, we are, we are targeting a uh, coverage of 20% farming families by 2025. So that will be meeting our winter demands as well as the summer demands uh, in future. Then agri entrepreneurs, we, uh, this year we have introduced five agri entrepreneurs for this project and uh, th they are being implemented this year. And then it will uh, be open for the other entrepreneurs also so that we can extend the scope of this project then supply to farming uh, army and paramilitary forces uh, local uh, farmers and self help group are supplying to army and paramilitary also and uh, also post harvest processing and exports also next sir so this this is the recent visit of agriculture minister uh, honorable narendra singh tomarji so they they visited on 11th of april of this month and uh, they they gone to Neoma, which is along the LSE border, and uh, where temperature drops even uh, lower than minus 10 degree, uh, minus 20 degree. So they have seen this greenhouse and uh, they appreciated this uh, 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 this initiative. And the farmers demanded more greenhouses from him uh, for those areas because these areas are mainly uh, cut off from the uh, different parts and they are uh, more harsh actually because most of them are nomads and they are demanding so he also appreciated the role of department next so this is a photo of uh, uh, honorable minister seeing the greenhouse and uh, seeing the fresh vegetable in, in the month of april which was uh, not heard in ladakh because uh, otherwise we are getting vegetable from the open field in mainly july or august only so uh, he appreciated the role of department next so this was from uh, my side sir and my, from my department sir uh, if there is any query from the, any speaker any guest um, and they can ask me and this scheme is doing very well and this scheme is meeting the objective of uh, department as well as the people's aspirations and uh, thank you for the um, uh, drpg for inviting me for this
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ravindra ji. I think it is quite a game changer. I have just one observation. What is the temperature inside a greenhouse uh, when the temperature outside is minus 20 or minus 30? What is the temperature sir, within the greenhouse that is maintained? Sir, sir it's about uh, 4 or 5 degrees, sir. 4 or 5 degrees Celsius. Even it, it's about minus 30 outside. So it will be uh, 4 or 5 degrees above the freezing uh, temperature, sir. So it is five degrees centigrade. You can maintain it, and yes, yes. Uh, and uh, it is the entire uh, heating is through sunlight. Huh? That is yes. uh, sunlight, sir, solar and, energy. Uh, yes, sir. Sunlight. The heat energy is trapped inside, and the walls of uh, the greenhouse is made up of uh, uh, some uh, brick local bricks, so that the heat can't uh, trap outside, can't uh, escape outside. So uh, in night. You, uh, the temperature maintained and in morning it again and four or five days if there is no even if there is no sunlight for four or five days it can maintain the temperature above the freezing point if it is not opened and the heat is not escaped sir let me congratulate you i think the project meets a large number of objectives that uh, the government is looking at doubling of farmers income it also looks at women empowerment carbon neutrality more crop per inch, uh, whole range of uh, whole range of objectives have been met, and I think it is finding widespread acceptability from when the award was presented to you. So it, the project has grown in strength. Congratulations! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going uh, good, and uh, it is meeting the all the objective of the uh, population, sir. Thank you very much, Devendraji. Kindly stay in the web room. I'll now Thank invite you, our second speaker, Dr. Vinod Rao, Secretary Primary and Secondary Education, Government of Gujarat. The Vidya Samiksha Kendras were taken up uh, and under the Sam Samagra Siksha program for the, as for the PM's Awards for Excellence in Public Administration in 2022 also. And we had on the Civil Services Day a uh, breakaway session that was chaired by Secretary Education which was attended by some of the highest number of participants, some 7,000 participants attended that particular breakaway session. Uh, so uh, let me invite uh, Dr. Vinod Rao to kindly make his presentation, please. Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Hope yes, I am audible. Sir. Yes, yes, you are audible. Please continue. Sir. Sir, namaste, sir. Uh, Vidya Samiksha Kendra is a is an effort to bring about transformation in school education through data-driven real-time monitoring. Sir, in school education, we actually do not have, in absolute terms, we don't have resource deficit. We actually have governance deficit and governance deficit can be overcome through technology-driven monitoring and uh, uh, particularly sir particularly through data driven monitoring which should be real time and concurrent sir gujarat has 33 districts 254 blocks 3247 clusters about 54000 schools sir 4 lakh teachers and about 11.5 million students So the biggest challenge for us is 51% of total manpower of the state government is with school education department and 15 to 16% of the total budget, the largest budget goes to school education department. So monitoring is the real key and Vidya Samiksha Kendra takes monitoring one step forward. It is not just about uh, the whole school system, it is about tracking the learning progress of every student across every grade in every school thereby improving grade appropriate learning outcomes of every student so it's not just about a school system or a school as a whole but every students every grade every subject learning outcome is tracked next it is country's first real-time online holistic monitoring of school education it has deployed artificial intelligence, big data, machine learning extensively. And we have our insights real time, state, district, block, cluster, school, grade, subject, student and learning outcome level. Next. It has broadly 
four pillars on which the whole Vidya Samiksha Kendra is there. Attendance, assessment, accreditation and administration. So we started with school attendance system in 2018. We took it, go back, go next. We started Pravesh Utsav 2.0, sir. We integrated the data of health department with UDI's data based on child tracking system of education department from 2019. Birth records of civil registration system was integrated. We ensured that not a single child is left out at the point of enrollment, sir. Next. After enrollment, we ensured that every child attends school regularly and uh, we started online attendance system in 2018-19 across all government primary schools. There was a lot of resistance to start with, but we and there were technology challenges also. We, we still could do it. And in 2019, sir, entire state, we got almost 100% attendance to be entered every day by 11, 11 a.m. Over a period of one year, sir, we saw 26% increase in regularity of attendance, which translates into about 13.5 lakh students becoming more regular in school. We started detecting hidden dropouts in the system. Students who were there enrolled, but with 0% attendance during a given day, a given month. So we have line listing of irregular students. Our teachers reached out to parents and tried to make them more regular. Next. We focused on strengthening foundational learning and uh, diagnostic assessment of every student in second standard was done in the month of 2019. Data entry of every student was done, remedial program of every student was done and uh, we ensured that every child comes from second standard to third standard after minimum skills of literacy and numeracy, reading, writing and maths. Next. We started centralized summative and formative assessment since 2019, sir. The first centralized assessment in most of the schools in India today still is the 10th standard exam. But unless we have centralized assessment, sir, we won't know whether the learning outcome is actually happening or whether it is a camouflaged way of assessment that is locally happening. So we started centralized summative assessments twice a year from grade 3 across all schools. So uniform timetable, centralized question paper, invigilation by outside the teachers from outside the school, evaluation of papers by teachers from other school and data entry of every student for every subject, question and answer wise was done. This led to hundreds of crores of data sets. Next. So about 500 crore plus data set every year and therefore, Vidya Samiksha Kendra was required to do real-time analysis of this data. We, in, we used AI and ML for this. We Today, sir, we have distributed about 17 crore report cards to our students because of this. We know learning outcome-wise, longitudinal tracking of every student across the last three academic years. Next. We took uh, this assessment further to school ac accreditation and uh, 500 teachers deputed as school inspectors during 2021 sir Gujarat became the first state to accredit all its 32,500 government primary schools three cycles of accreditation has been completed till date sir next so accreditation led to school report cards we also know for what particular uh, which particular aspect of the school needs improvement and which particular aspect of the school is already uh, it, 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 compared to other schools, it's good. So this gives an X-ray vision of what exactly the school is doing and where improvement is required to be made. Next. During COVID, sir, we could do 25 crore virtual classes through Microsoft Teams, 5.26 lakh subscribers for live classes in YouTube. Sir, today Gujarat is the largest subscriber in Microsoft Teams globally and uh, in Vande Gujarat uh, channel also we have uh, sir, uh, through BISAC we are able to disseminate our learning content. Next. 
In 2019, we decided that all textbooks that will go for print in 2020 will be QR coded. Today, sir, since last three years almost, we are number one in the country in Diksha consumption. Our, uh, though our number of students in the state is lesser than many other states, our direct Diksha direct place is significantly more than all other states in the country. Gujarat is the first state to have its own edtech company by the name Gujarat Education Technology. It is providing world-class e-content, e free of cost to government schools, and uh, it's now extending to private schools also. Next. Our free learning content, Jishala, has been developed internally, and it is providing us useful insights because learning management system, we are tracking the progress of every child sitting in Vidya Samiksha Kendra. Next. We have also introduced school administrative software to minimize the acad non-academic, clerical and administrative work of head teachers. This has ensured that about uh, 8 lakh average logins at the state district block cluster and school levels happen. Estimated about 1.25 crore man hours of head teachers we are able to save every year because of this. Next. So these are some of the dashboards that we have at the Vidya Samiksha Kendra. Next. 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 So Honorable Prime Minister visited uh, Vidya Samiksha Kendra on 18th of April last year, sir. Next. Satyo, Gujarat. आज सफलता की जिस ऊंचाई पर है विकास की जिस ऊंचाई पर है वो हर गुजराती को गर्व से भर देता है इसका अनुभव मैंने कल गांधीनगर के विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र में भी किया गुजरात के बच्चों के भविष्य को हमारी आने वाली पीढ़ियों को सवारने के विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र एक बहुत ताकत बन रहा है हमारी सरकारी प्राथमिक शाला उसके लिए इतनी बड़ी टेक्नोलॉजी का उपयोग ये दुनिया के लिए एक अजूबा है ये विद्या समीक्षा केंद्र पूरे देश को दिशा दिखाने वाला सेंटर बन गया Sir, after the visit of Honorable Prime Minister, we we had uh, the National Conference of School Education Ministers in Gujarat, where all education ministers of all states uh, came and spent two days understanding Vidya Samiksha Kendra and uh, exploring how it can be replicated in all states. Next. We had delegation from Ministry of Education, from other states, from various organizations, uh, of uh, government of India and uh, international delegations. So, Vidya Samiksha Kendra was recipient of Prime Minister's Award for Excellence in Public Administration, April 2020. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I think it was a very impressive presentation, uh, Dr. Vinod, and uh, I fondly remember your visit to Delhi last year and also the contribution that you have made in the regional conferences in spreading and disseminating this best practice. The sheer volume, you, of, uh, the sheer volume of data that the Vidya Samiksha Kendra is handling of uh, 115 lakh students, about 4 lakh teachers, and across 54,000 student uh, schools is massive. It is absolute big data that is being handled and uh, we were discussing as to how so much big data is being collated on a timely basis, analyzed, and policy interventions are being made to ensure that uh, the entire governance ecosystem of uh, uh, secondary and primary schools shows significant uh, improvements. So our congratulations to you. We will open the floor for discussions. If any participant has any question, uh, please raise your hand or you can, the floor is open, please. If anybody has a question, please uh, flag it to either of our speakers. 
Does anybody have a question? Does any of the participants have a question? We have 560, we have 560 officers connected. Does anybody have a question, please? Acha, kindly unmute the kindly unmute the uh, official who has raised his hand for a question, please. Akashji, please check the official who has raised the flag hands for a question. Please unmute it. Hmm? Somebody, yeah. has somebody has raised a question through message. What is the technology yes. used for online attendance? Sir? So the yes. technology that we have used is uh, locally developed. Uh, it is uh, at zero cost in on our own. Sir, uh, wherever uh, connectivity is there, in every mobile of the teacher, the class teacher will get uh, the name of this, all the names in the drop down mode. Only those students who are absent, they, he has to mark as absent. Rest all will be presumed as present. And when he clicks it, uploads. Wherever, sir, this uploading doesn't happen because of connectivity issue, it will upload subsequently when he comes within the connectivity. And there is also an SMS. Uh, provision made to the software so it is a very locally developed software now sir we want to move towards facial recognition so now we are working on a professionally developed facial rec biometric uh, facial recognition software which we are we are developing using a professional software agency any other questions please you are having a question yes we have our deputy secretary Shrimati sarita taneja ji has a question yes please uh, this is Sarita Taneja, Deputy Secretary from Department of Administrative Reforms. My question is to Ravinder sir. Uh, actually, we cannot imagine the harsh winter like 30, minus 35 degree where, while we are still facing the scorching heat in the north continuously. Uh, but I really congratulate for the, uh, uh, for the very robust and very efficient project. My query is a very small one. Uh, as we all know that healthy crops are grown only with the support of many factors like uh, nutrient, soil, uh, air, sunlight and uh, uh, many other things, a little bit rain also. Uh, in your area, how do you get the sufficient uh, sunlight for growing these crops? This is the first one. And second one is uh, when you get the vegetables, are they equally nutrient because they are not having so much natural conditions and they are not so, uh, uh, grown in uh, some, some of the natural conditions. Are they really nutrients like the other uh, crops which are grown in the natural conditions? Thank you. Ravinder Kumar ji, can you take that question? Yes, yes. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, the enough sunlight. So, Ladakh is having 300 days of sunlight per year out of 365. So, uh, sunlight is a, in abundance in Ladakh. And uh, the matter of fact is that sunlight is very harsh actually during the summers. And even in winters, there is very less cloudy. So, sunlight is more problem. And we are getting a lot of solar passive energy uh, during the summer as well as winters. And these greenhouses are actually uh, polycarbonate greenhouses. So they get sunlight uh, through their polycarbonate sheet. And there are uh, UV, they, these are UV protected greenhouses actually. There is a UV protection in these UV film uh, to protect the intense of UV rays also. Uh, and sunlight is not a problem. Uh, second, uh, we are having a, a integrated bio uh, waste decomposer in these greenhouses. Uh, which is a PUSA technology and also uh, vermicompost technology for uh, disintegrating the uh, compost uh, through vermicompost. So uh, we are supplying nutrient through biofertilizer only and we have enough uh, presence of uh, sunlight 
and we are getting good vegetative growth in summers we are having one of the best colors of the vegetable fruits and flowers so that is because of the good sunlight and uh, the clean water we, we have a uh, though we have very less water but our water is very clean our air is very pure so we have good climatic conditions for growing the crops as well as fruits second is nutrient rich uh, i think uh, nutrient rich uh, i we have not done any kind of a um, uh, scientific study for nutrient of these product uh, crops but uh, i have seen one thing practically that uh, the people who are coming to ladakh the, uh, from different parts of country even they uh, take the vegetable and fruits from this region uh, with them so whether they are coming from jnk whether they are coming even uh, other people also like to have the organic and fresh vegetables from ladakh to different parts and it's a, not a secret that all the leafy vegetable green leafy vegetables are uh, rich in nutrients and which is very less in uh, grown in ladakh uh, due to climatic conditions so uh, these greenhouses are meeting all these objectives and uh, study i think we need some scientific study also to uh, prove this, this kind of uh, claim also Thank you very much. I'll now invite Professor Poonam Singh to kindly extend the vote of thanks. Namaskar. Good afternoon to all. First of all, I would like to. I'm very delighted to propose a vote of thanks to you all for this great event. And first of all, I would like to, I think, give a great thank to Sri Vishnuvasa, Secretary, Department of Administrative Reforms and Public Relations, and Chairman of Management Committee, National Center for Good Governance. Uh, for suggesting and uh, uh, to giving a great help to compile this. I think this is the last 13th webinar we have com uh, completed. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank the, all the uh, uh, officers, additional secretaries and joint secretaries and all the officers from DRPG and my NCGG team. And uh, after that, we are very, very grateful and thankful for the both speakers uh, who have given, uh, I think, the very, uh, very, uh, very good presentation about their work. Basically, the innovation. They these are the practices which they have done. Especially in the Ladakh, they have created 1,500 uh, uh, greenhouse, and especially in the education department. The second speaker. Uh, is, is, they have given, I think, the, the major challenges in education is uh, the quality-based outcome and the learning outcome assessment. So periodic assessment they have done. So it is very, very, I think we, we would like to congratulate both of them and all the audience who have participated today in this webinar. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you very much. We will conclude the discussions here. Thank you.